Bon, how are you? Oh, good. Hey, Eric. I guess, Coach, when you take a look at the, 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 the draw, the first thing that jumps out is just how competitive this, this region is. What, what do you see for, from, from these teams and just how, how good is the softball going to be this weekend? Yeah, I mean, I think one, we're always grateful that the committee and getting to host is just so awesome for us and our program. And um, I know it's a full body of work and we work really hard on having that schedule. And this year was tough with COVID, but because the ACC allowed us to 12 out of conference games, I think it allowed us some um, cross conference competition that was able to, to give us a chance by playing Arizona and Florida and some of the games to, to be able to host. So it's been pretty awesome. When the names came up on the board, you know, I think it's kind of interesting because we had our ACC opening weekend with UNC and we got COVIDed out, COVIDed out, however we say that. Um, and via Twitter, within 15 minutes, we have a team to play in Auburn and Kennesaw State's there and we got to play them. They weren't in the schedule and now we are playing them in postseason. So familiarity for sure. Um, know everybody, played UCF before. Uh, we're all a lot alike. And uh, it's a very competitive regional um, for sure. So, um, but I'll also tell you that we always know we're going to get an SEC team here if we're hosting. Uh, we always know we're going to have very competitive mid-major teams. If you call UCF a mid-major team, I mean, they're, they're a great ball club. They've been doing great things. Kennesaw State has played a great schedule. So um, always a dogfight regionals here. And uh, we know that we're excited for it. How motivated was the team? Was the team, the team coming uh, coming off the ACC loss uh, to Duke last week, and um, kind of the week leading up to the regional? Yeah, I mean, I I think a lot of people um, when you look at this, we had a COVID freshman class that didn't experience postseason, and we have a true freshman class that is now experiencing postseason. So we have two classes, and we're pretty young. Like we have a lot of young people on our team, right? So. Um, so the ACC tournament and this whole postseason process has been a really good um, opportunity to talk about our goals and our mission throughout the season and how much the body of work really matters to you and how those milestones are. So, yes, where there's some frustration and some tears and some, some upset returners and upset players, I mean, there's been a lot of history in this program. I mean, we've won a lot of tournaments. We've won a lot of regular season, and it's been really awesome. But every team is unique to themselves. And, um, you know, it gave us an opportunity to really talk about what it means to win championships and to win weekends and to win battles and how it comes down to one pitch. And um, so I think there's lessons in learning and winning and there's lessons in losing. And um, so it's been some really good heart to heart for us. So I think it's going to be great for us moving forward. Coach, uh, just full capacity this weekend. I mean, it's been a while since we've had a full house. I guess perfect timing for you guys. How excited are you to play in front of a, a probably a loud crowd? I'm never, I'm never be ready to get back. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, again, I go back to some of our rookies. Like all they know is 20% <laughs> in the stands. And um, but one thing about softball, we always created our own energy. Softball's always had that. Um, you know, we're still a growing sport in that sense, um, bigger stadiums and feeling the crowd noise. Um, so it has been unique to us. February was weird. You have 150 people in the stands and they kind of say things that kind of don't. So that was even unique to now having, I don't know, 3000 people here yelling. That'll be unique. So I think we're ready for anything. The kids are super pumped. We found out 10 minutes before our team meeting yesterday and they were jacked that, you know, um, one, we don't have to tell people no. I mean, it, so many people have been reaching out to us, like, can we come? Do we have tickets? Do we have this? And, and our kids have had to tell people no, and that sucks, right? To have to tell people no to come watch us. So they're like, oh my gosh, so exciting. People don't have to sit in the garage. They can actually come to the game and just uh, just relieve. Let's, let's play some softball. So it's just full normal feel right now and prepping for a weekend. Coach, the postseason is a totally new animal. Um, you've had about a week off since your last game. What are some of the main things you've been working on in that time in practice to get the team ready for the uh, tournament coming up? Um, yeah, I think rest is one important key when you get to this time of year. Um, you go through the whole season and a lot of kids get banged up. Um, you know, if, if you see like Anna's caught every game pretty much, uh, our infields played, you know, a lot. So 
sometimes just not having school and the ability just to get some good rest and get some good recovery is just as important as your ground ball reps and your cuts and relays. So, so we mix a lot of that in there um, on, on making sure that we're getting our proper rest and working from there. Um, we spend a lot of time, you know, breaking down some video. That's the one thing too, is you want to get prep for your team. So you know who you're facing this weekend and pitching and defense and some skill sets that they may bring to the park when you start to play them. So we talked a lot about that. And then just a, a lot more one-on-one -on -one time. So we do mixed practices. So we'll have 10 kids come out for an hour and a half and get after those 10 kids. And then an hour and a half later, another group of 10 kids. So it becomes a more one-on-one, -on -one. Um, have all the infielders together. So it's not the full team all the time. We break it down and really get after some individual things that we need to touch up with them on to get ready for the weekend. Coach, Auburn isn't who you were supposed to play sometime during the middle of this season, but is it nice to now know that you have a little bit of familiarity with somebody in your regional? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Auburn and Kennesaw State both played them both twice early in the season. Um, I think both programs grew through their schedule just as we did too. So there's familiarity, but there's also, you know, your freshmen aren't freshmen anymore. Um, you know, Auburn's got two really good freshman pitchers. They've grown through the SEC season. Uh, Kennesaw State has a, a arm too that's grown through their season. So, you know, I think that, you know, that there's growth in mo doing the season, the body work part of it, but um, the familiarity is, is good. I honestly think the most important part right now is knowing us and doing us. Um, you know, we, we've had a lot of ups and downs and, and just really just buying into, man, bring it, bring it every pitch, compete every pitch. That, that's going to be our, our big mantra this weekend. Hey, right, Coach, uh, it's been a good time for FSU sports in particular with women. Um, obviously, the soccer team in the championship, the tennis team made it to the Elite Eight, and also the golf team is also in the championship, too. Just talk about that. And also, do you feed off each other and uh, everybody doing well at the same time? Yeah, definitely. I think you got women's track and field, men's track and field in there too. Off the ACC, some of them were on the flight with us coming back from Louisville. Um, yeah, it's been hard, right? COVID's been hard this year for people to hang out and celebrate each other, you know, not allowed to get in groupings and stuff. So you kind of pass by a lot of text messages sent back and forth between players and, and coaches. And so there's definitely that support there too. Um, but, you know, I also know that success breeds success. So a lot of times, like it's the mindset in the weight room, it's the mindset in the training room, like your players around other players that want you to do high level things. So it becomes an everyday mentality. And we're so lucky that we share a building, we share a house here with soccer. Like those, those players are going daily on a mindset to be the best soccer player possible. We're going daily the best softball player possible. Like decisions around here are made on, on being the best version of yourself and um, really have, have loved that over the years here. Coach, there has been three active head coaches currently that have taken a program from the West Coast and one program from the East Coast to the NCAA tournament. There's only been a handful of coaches to do it in the history of Division I softball. Two of those coaches are going to be in this regional this weekend, yourself and Cindy Ball Malone. Just talk about that. You've known her for a long time, going back to when she was a player at Pacific and you were an assistant at Stanford. Kind of unique that you two have kind of shared a lot of uh, similar paths and making history mm -hmm. yeah yeah Cindy was an incredible player um you know I was able to recruit her and then uh was able to watch her grow up as, as she played at Pacific and the things that she did at UOP and um and then her, her young coaching career um I, I'm a big camper I love doing camps I love mingling with people I love troubleshooting how to teach the game at different levels and Cindy's been one of those that just as a student of the game and then you can see how that passion has taken her to where she's at and you know, she always talks about her experiences that, that have given her the confidence in coaching. You know, one of them at UW with HC with Heather Carr up there. So, um, so yeah, the game's a game. Doesn't matter where you come from. Uh, you know, I think that uh, the one thing that Cindy and I have in common, even though the age difference is we're grinders. You know, we, we both love grinding out the game. We, we love the, the, the figured out. You know, I've had to reinvent myself a little bit as a pitching coach this year. Like, I'm not going to sit set in my ways. I want to reach out to people. I don't think we're both um worried about that aspect we want to be the best version of what we can be for the kids and, and cindy has that trait and she's done a great job at ucf with that you also have a she has an assistant coach kendra who was on your staff on the national championship season yeah. what did you see in kendra then that you thought might she might be a go into coaching yeah 
So Kendra's a, a, an amazing story. Um, we competed against her for how many years at UNC, right? And she threw until her arm came off, literally, like she had to have arm surgery. I mean, she pitched and hit and just competed at UNC. And her uh, reason for coming to be a GA for us was she competed against us and she wanted to know how we could continue to win in the conference over and over again. Like I've competed against you. I wanna be a part of that and find out what that is because I've been on the other side of it. So I know what it's like to compete against it. I wanna get in it. I wanna see how that works. And uh, when she got here, she was all about it. Like, let, let's figure it Like, I know what it's like to play against you guys. Like, and now I know why, you know, the culture, like how you, how you live it every day. And, uh, you know, as a player was intrigued by it, as a graduate assistant intrigued, and now again, intrigued to make UCF the best. So her and Cindy work really well together because they are so, um, meant for the best for each individual player and bringing out the best in them. And Kendra's going to be a great coach in the future. Um, head coaching is in her DNA. It's going to happen. She's all in for it. And I'm really excited for her. Coach, there's a little bit of controversy about the uh, tournament, especially from the uh, Pac-12 teams. Um, do you, are you okay with how you're seating and where you are? And, um, also, it's not often that the ACC gets uh, multiple national seeds. So with Duke coming in at 13, that has to show the growth of the uh, conference as well. Yeah, super excited about our conference. Um, we've been talking about it for a while. And I think I talked to you guys a while about this uh, before, but not only for our softball conference to get better, but for our conference schools to pour the energy and the, the finances and the support into softball. When you look at UVA Stadium, Clemson Stadium, what Duke's doing, like it takes more than just athletes. It takes the village around them to keep it growing. And so by seeing what's happening in the ACC and then the amount of teams that are getting in and earning the at-large bid and earning the opportunity, it, it's really going to be good for us down the, down the row. Um, as for the pack, how I, you know, I coached at Stanford for many years. I know what it's like out there. Um, I know that softball just incredible history. I mean, Washington, UCLA, Arizona, Arizona State, even, you know, Oregon, like Cal. I mean, the amount of national championships, the amount of times, like six teams from the pack were in the World Series, seven teams from the pack were in the World Series. Like the history is out there, but the funding for TV and those things has not been. And then the SEC comes in, the ACC steps up, the Big Ten steps up. Now we have this battle. So I don't know. I'm happy where we're at. I just want to play. It, it's been a pandemic year. Three months ago, we were all talking about, hey, can we just play some softball? And now just back to politics again. And I understand that because you get competitive. But I also understand that the, the PAC could, could use some support in television. Like it is what you see on TV. And they talked about this the whole time. The RPI was not going to be normal this year. And the eye test was going to be a big part of it. And if you're not getting in there on TV and you're not streaming, people can't see that. And then you know, can obviously see what even what the ACC network's done for us and it's done for the SEC. So um, I think that's definitely what's been brought up by the Pac-12 and will continue to be talked about by the Pac-12. That said, uh, Coach Rittman and Clemson is busing to Alabama. Does it bother you that the ACC regular season champion doesn't get to host and the tournament champion doesn't get to host? That's more of a unique circumstances because of the predetermined sites, but Clemson had a heck of a year. Coach Rittman did a heck of a job there and yet is uh, not get rewarded by hosting. Yeah, um, but I, I think if you were to look at the body of work in the RPI, like they didn't play that competitive schedule in the beginning where like Duke went out and played LSU and did some things and you know, I, I think the message always needs to be sent. I personally think so too, is like, you want to challenge yourself from the start. You have to challenge your strength of schedule and opponent strength of schedule is so important. And if you go out and just try to play teams to get the W's, that's not going to play well for the end of season. 2018, we played Pittsburgh in the ACC tournament and they didn't get a chance because of their RPI schedule. Like I just, I, I over, I talk about it over and over again. Like you've got to challenge yourselves early on and play those games. And I mean, who would have thought first year program, maybe year, you know, I don't know, year and a half program, right? Cause they got 20 games under their belt and they got some transfers in there. So they got, but you know, I mean, honestly, you got, you're not setting up a schedule to be a, to be a number, you know, top eight seed. Like, so what they've done has been incredible. They're an incredible team. Tuscaloosa is going to be awesome for them it's going to be a huge stepping stone for them. Like it, it's awesome. They could come out, they've got the pitching cables good, but you know, it's going to be a pressure situation, but 
in the growth of that program, man, this is going to be a really good stepping stone. You know, I'm feeling what it's like to play in those big time atmospheres. Does anybody have anything else? One last one. You obviously played Kennesaw State. You saw Melanie Bennett. Cates is a great hitter there. I mean, do you kind of shake your head? Because I feel like you always get the, one of the toughest four seeds every year when you're hosting. You mentioned you always get an SEC team. I would add that you always get one of the toughest four seeds, and this is one of them right here, an at-large team. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's been like that all the time, though, and that's okay. Like, you know, I mean, you got to beat the best to get to where you want to go. It's going to be hard to get where you want to go. I don't get caught up in that. Like, you know, the names come up on the board. Let's go to work. Uh, don't get caught up in it. And um, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, Kate can swing it. She can swing it. Melly's good. Uh, good pitching coach. Good pitch calling. Um, they've got a lot of good things going on. Um, you know, they're a scrappy team. So, but we, we've, at year in and year out hosting, we get that. Totally okay with it. Like we're, we're in that area. Like, you know, you got to, got to get through some really good teams to get to where you want to go. And so I, I think it's a big mindset. You good? That was a great. Thank right. you so much. Thanks, coach. Good luck. Thanks, coach. Good luck. Thanks, coach. Good luck. Thanks, y'all.